tutorial. This is the Kermit term tutorial, which is number 2.2b. Um, we're going to be talking about anchor points. We're going to be talking about direct selection tool more. We're learning something new called Bezier splines, or sometimes they're referred to as control handles, but their their real name is Bezier splines. Um, and modifier keys, we're going to be learning a few of those and how they affect this. Um, okay, so this is what Kermit looks like, Okay, and we're going to start off with Illustrator. First thing I want to do is reset my workspace. Um, so this is the Adobe 2021 version, so it should be closer to what you're working on. Okay, we're going to go here, we're going to click on Essentials, and we're going to reset Essentials, Okay, which is something we do every time we start the software. The other thing is I've been recently turning on the Control tab, which is at the top here, which gives you more controls depending on what you have selected on your screen. Okay, you'll notice that when I have my desktop, my uh, artboard selected, there are no selection, no options, but when I select an object, I get some kind of controls here. Okay, all right, so I've already selected the green that I want. Um, if you wanted to copy mine exactly, this, this is the hex code. Okay, feel free to copy that out. Uh, and I'm setting my stroke to be uh, 10 point stroke. Okay, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create of a circle like this. I'm going to align it to my artboard. Okay, so I can do that through the align palette, which is window align. Okay, and I can then take that and specify that I want to align to my artboard. Okay, and then align it. Okay, there's also you'll notice that there are these tools up here as well. Okay, so if this is not aligned and I want to align it, I can decide from this drop down here which uh, what I want it to align it to, whether I've got if I've got a couple of Object selected, I can align to selection or to the artboard, and then it's horizontal and vertical, right there. Okay. Um, so what we need, what we're going to learn, kind of the important part of this lesson is um, manipulating the anchor point. So you'll remember when I make any shape, if it's a square, um, and I go to my direct select tool, I can then pick up these points, right? And what we're going to find in on whatever shape you create, if I'm creating um, a hexagon, there are going to be six anchor points, right? And I can pick them up all at once by selecting the shape and moving it, or individually, or I can pick up a segment and pick up two shapes, okay? Select on that, select on that, and delete. On a circle, or on, a, on an oval, or on an ellipse, you'll notice there are four points. Now, four points should make a square, but there are these lines, these what are called handles, okay? Um, and these are the Bezier handles which control a curve. So you'll see that when I when I click on this, now this has to be the direct select tool. It won't work with the selection tool, so make sure you are on uh, A on your keyboard or direct select tool, okay? Click away and then click on one of your four anchor points, okay? And you get this handle. Now, if I click and drag on this handle, or drag away from the anchor point, you can see that it switches or it changes the curve. It has an effect on the curve. And there are two separate. There's one on one side. So if I put this back to a circle and start on the top here, okay, there's one on the left side that affects this curve. And because it's changing the segment, okay, this segment here, okay, the one I have selected, okay, because I'm changing that, it's actually changing uh, the way the curve joins this anchor point, right? So just be aware that it, uh, it's controlled by two things, controlled here and controlled here. And if I, you know, drag these in different ways, these two are going to oppose each other a little bit. So just be aware of how those two interact. Okay? All right, I'm going to undo that. Get back to a circle. Okay. So there's our circle. So what we need to do for this activity is we're going to be kind of making um, a shape that sort of starts with a circle but ends up being kind of diamond-ish, I suppose. Okay, so the way to do that is we're going to, there's a couple things we're going to do. One, we're going to change the curvature of this. So notice that when I make this, you know, I twist it, I can make it, uh, you know, the curve turn accordingly, or I can pull it away or bring it closer. Okay, same thing here, I can bring this closer. Okay, now what I'm going to do, in fact, is I'm going to reset this to get rid of that curve and create a new one. So you'll see under the pen tool here, there's something called the anchor point tool. And if I click on any of these points, it gets rid of the Bezier splines from that, leaving us just, okay, just the anchor points and the segments. Okay, if I click, it deletes them. If I click and drag, it creates a new set of Bezier splines. 
Okay, so I'm going to undo that back to the point that it's a circle. Hold on. I'm going to delete these guys. Delete, delete. Okay, and I'm on my anchor point tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click and get, get rid of this one and click and drag to create kind of a shorter bezier point. Before it was like this to make it round. I want it to be a little bit less of a pull. Okay, maybe around there. Because you'll notice there's kind of a, a bit of a point here. Okay? All right. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one and this one up. So I'm going to go to my anchor point tool. I'm going to select over these guys and I'm going to hit on my arrow key now because it moves one pixel at a time. That's quite slow. I'm going to hold shift and move them up a little bit faster. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is the same thing with this guy here. And I'm going to tighten that up by going to the anchor point tool. Okay, and I'm going to click and drag. And you'll notice that it goes, uh, you know, opposite of what you might want if you drag one way. And then it goes with what you might want the other way. All right, now I want to do the same thing here. I want to take it so that this is kind of this shape. And this is somewhere around this shape. But I need to get these to align. And I don't want to guess. So I'm going to undo that to this point. I'm going to create a ruler. So I'm going to go view, uh, and then I'm going to add, turn on. There's a, a way to do it by um, with a keyboard shortcut, which is Command R. But uh, there should be a way to turn on my ruler here. I think it's under here. Rulers, show rulers. Okay, Command R, right? And you'll see Command R turns on and off. Okay, now I'm using the keyboard shortcut. Turns on and off these rulers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor inside this ruler, and I'm going to drag out. A line. And what happens there is it creates this like, I don't know, I guess cyan blue line. Okay? Now this is just a ruler. It doesn't exist in your artwork. Okay? And I'm going to do the same thing here. You'll notice that I can pull one out from the left ruler or the top ruler. Okay? And all that's happening is it's just creating a, a, a ruler. Okay? And you can have as many of these in your space as you want. Okay? You can hide them by going um, view uh, rulers and then hide rulers. Okay, and that'll, oops, command R. Oh, sorry, not rulers, guides. Um, uh, view, and I want to go, oh, it's here somewhere. Um, that? No, it's, it's uh, command colon on your keyboard. I can't remember where to find it in the, in the tools it's somewhere. Command colon. Uh, I can't remember. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's in there somewhere, so if you want to look, look for it, go ahead. But Command colon will turn those on and off. Okay? Uh, and then if I want to get rid of them, I just hit V on my keyboard, and I select the one I want. So I'm going to click on that and hit Delete on my keyboard. That, Delete on my keyboard, and that, Delete on my keyboard. If I have a bunch of them, I want to get rid of all of them. I can actually go to View, and then uh, Guide. They're called Guides. I think they're maybe under... Hmm, I can't remember where they are. Object... I'll look it up later. Anyways, point being, you can turn them all off. Or you delete them all. Okay, I thought it was under under this. Oh, here, guides. Okay, so this is hide guides, lock guides, and then you can clear guides. Okay, which will get rid of them. All right, so if I've got these guys here, there's my guides, and I want to get rid of them, I would go view, I'd go to guides, and I would go clear guides, and they're all gone. All right, now, what I, the reason I started this is because I wanted to make it so that the Bezier curve here, okay, I want this to be, I'm going to hold shift so that it's not, I want it to be straight up and down. So I'm going to hold shift, which you remember locks it to one, um, one axis. Okay, and I'm going to bring this guy down, okay, that Bezier point to this point. I do the same thing on this side, okay, and I click down, hold shift to lock it. And then I'm going to have it come right to this guide. And what that does is now it creates an even bezier on both sides. I can actually lift this up. I'm going to select over both of these two using my direct select tool. Hold shift and move these up a little bit. Okay, I'm actually going to bring them in as well. I'm going to select here, shift, and bring that to the left. Sorry, to the right, and bring this one, two, three to the left. Okay, and there's obviously other ways you can do this. I can, right, I can start with a, a diamond if I wanted to and then rotate it, but this is the way I chose to do it. I'm going to get rid of this guide, click on that, delete on my keyboard. Okay, so there's the kind of the basic shape for our Kermit, okay? We need to do a couple other things. We're going to make uh, some eyes, so I'm going to go to the uh, ellipse tool, and I'm going to create an eye around that big, something like that. Okay, I'm going to set this to be um, a white fill with a black stroke. And I'm going to set my width stroke to 10. 
Okay, and then similarly what we did previously is I'm going to take this, because if you look at his eyes, they're kind of like, they're not quite round, right? They're a bit more, um, I don't know whatever shape that is. Okay, so I'm going to drag this guy up. I'm going to actually just click shift on my, or hold shift on my keyboard and click the arrow key. All right, now I actually want to bring these guys up as well. So again, I'm going to just drag a guide down and I want to bring this up to about there. And the same thing here, up to about, so hold shift to about there. Okay, and um, yeah, that looks okay. Get rid of this thing. I might bring this back down just a touch. Round it up just a little bit. Okay, and there's our eye. Okay, um, I'm going to create a pupil, which is pretty straightforward. I'm going to make this black, and I'm going to have no stroke on this one. Okay, so here's my... Oh, that didn't work. Try that again. Black, and no stroke. Okay, and I'm going to put that maybe a little smaller. Hold shift. Oops. V on my keyboard. Move that into place. Maybe a little bigger. Shift to constrain it to a circle. Okay, and then I need this, um, you know, that kind of line here. I'm going to zoom in so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm about there. I get a rectangle. Okay, I'm going to make it about the right size. It's probably around, around there. I'm going to select this, hold shift, select the other one, and I'm going to just align them to each other. Oh, not to the, not to the artboard, but to each other. Okay, so align to selection. I'm going to align that and align this, and now those two are aligned. Now the one thing I, I want to round this out, so I'm going to take this and drag this. But the one thing I want to do is this point shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like, oops, it shouldn't be straight like this. It should be kind of curved. Okay, so here's a tool we're going to learn that will give us a little control over that. Okay, it's under object, and then I'm going to go down to uh, envelope distort. Okay, which means it kind of puts a package over this graphic and uh, and distorts it using that. There's ways to do this for now. We'll just learn warp, which is quite straightforward. And there are a bunch of drop downs here. Okay, and the one we want is actually just called arc. It's this first one here. And depending on how much you want to arc it, you just change that setting. Okay, if you can't see the change happening in real time, just click on preview because otherwise it might not be doing that. Okay, so I don't know. I'm gonna make mine maybe 20. That looks okay to me. I'll hit OK. All right, and then I'm going to take this guy and align them again. Oops. There. Okay, now that's actually going to come up a little bit. So I'm going to hold Shift. Okay. Because it aligned it to the center and it's curved, so whatever. Delete that. Okay, I'm going to turn these into one shape using my Shape Builder. Oh, and to do this, you'll notice when I do that, because there's already a shape applied to it, when I click, click through it, we won't do it to that background there. Okay, to do that, I've got to release the, the uh, or apply that warp. So I'm going to right click. I don't know why this shows up over here, but anyways, I'm going to go, hold on. Let's move this, right click, and I'm going to say, uh, no, I can't do it. I just have to do it from somewhere else. Um, object. I think it's object. Envelope. Expand. Yeah, okay. So, uh, what happens there? And I'll just undo that. Okay, see that? That warp over there? If I double click, you can see the warp is applied over top of the original, right? You can see there's still that shape here. Okay, if I go back out to the main... Um, artboard. Okay, I still have this treatment over top of this thing. Okay, um, what I need to do is I need to expand that. So I right click, or so I don't right click. I got to go to um, object, and then envelope distort, which is where we applied that warp. And I'm going to say expand, and that sort of just applies it and goes. All right, you can't undo that now. All right, so now I can put this here. Okay, I will align those at least horizontally. Okay, and then I'm going to now go to my shape builder tool and drag through and it'll work. Okay, great. I'm gonna take that and stick it into kind of around that position and zoom out a little bit. Okay, I don't need that one, I'll delete that. And I'm gonna group this together. So I'm gonna drag over top, okay, or you can click on one, hold shift and click on the other. And I'm gonna group them together either by right clicking and saying group or by going object, 
uh, group right there. Okay, all right. So there's our eye. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna rotate it into position. Now, I'm kind of paying attention to how um, how much of an angle that is, right? So what I might do, in fact, is do that specifically in the transform um, um, palette here. Okay, and I might change it to oh, I don't know, 30. Okay, maybe 25. That's better. Okay, that actually looks a bit small, so I'm going to bump that up just a little bit. Okay, and that looks probably okay to me. Now I need the other eye. That actually still looks a bit small. Bump that up even more. Okay. All right, now I'm going to copy this and paste it. Okay, over here. And I want the, obviously, I want the opposite angle. So I could change this to negative 25. Okay, or I can go object, transform, and I can reflect this across the horizontal, sorry, the vertical plane, and it flips it, okay? Or another thing I can do, I'm gonna cancel this, I'm gonna delete this. I can actually just take this one and duplicate it by going on and, and like transform all in one move. So if I go object, transform, reflect, and say I want it to go across, okay? I want it to reflect in the vertical axis, but instead of saying okay, I'm gonna just say copy, and what that'll do is it'll make a copy of the original. Right, so there's my original, and that's the copy. I'm gonna hold shift and drag that over. All right, so there's our second die. All right, the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna make a mouth. So I'm gonna go over here to the ellipse tool, and I'm gonna drag an oval about that big, a little less wide than his actual face. And I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard or select my direct select tool. Okay, I'm gonna click away and then drag this anchor point down to about there, and this anchor point down to about there. Okay, so maybe a little more. That looks all right. All right, now these are the wrong colors. He should have a, a black stroke. Oops, a black stroke like that. Okay, and it should be about 10 pixels. So I'm gonna take that to 10. Okay, and I'm gonna make the fill more of like a deep red color. Something like that. All right, there's our, our fill. We're not quite done, we have a couple more moves to make. Um, we're gonna add in, he's got a tongue, okay? So we're gonna go like this. Actually, we'll do it with a triangle. So I'm gonna go to the polygon tool. I'm gonna click once and it's gonna say, so right, so if I click and drag, it makes whatever side I have select, like whatever options I have in my my toolbar here, right? I click on it, it says six. So when I click and drag, it says six. But if I click and change this to three and hit OK, it'll give me a triangle, and that's what I want. Okay, I'm gonna change this instead of being um, uh, like this dark maroon. I'm gonna change it to like a lighter color, and for now, we'll just go with this here. Okay, and I'm going to flip it around. So I'm gonna rotate that. I'm holding Shift so that it snaps to a 45 all the way to 180. I'm going to take this tool here, which is called the anchor point tool, and I'm going to click and drag out kind of a curve. Now I'm going to hold shift so that it stays in this horizontal plane. Okay, now it should be a little bit like kind of forked like that. I'm going to make a copy. So V on my keyboard, hold option on my keyboard and drag down a copy or command C, command V. Okay, I'm going to make this black or maybe not quite black, maybe really quite dark like that. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the stroke on this one. And then I'm gonna squish it. Okay, and this is gonna end up being just like in the center here. Okay, so I'm gonna align that, select them both, align to each other. I'm gonna get rid of the excess here by going to my shape builder and holding option. I don't need to do this now because I'm gonna have to get rid of it in a second anyways, but just do that anyways. Okay, and that pink looks a little crazy to me. I'm gonna tone that down. So uh, we haven't looked at this tool yet, but if I click on this, you can see there's like a slider here, a color slider. Let's bring that, I don't even know what it's supposed to be. Maybe something like that. That pink was a bit intense. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna, so basically I'm gonna group all this. I'm gonna go right click group. I want to put this like here, but I want it hidden by this piece, right? Like I want that, I don't want, the, his tongue obviously coming out of his nose. I want it like this, but that's too big. And like this, the curve is wrong. So I need to sort of hide this behind that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click over here, hold option on my keyboard and drag this guy over. Let's put these guys, I select all this and move it over. Okay, 
And I'm going to bring this guy here and this guy here. Now I'm just going to place them sort of in the position I want. So I'm going to take all of this and align it to each other like that. Okay. And then, you know, depending on how high or low I want that to be, and I think probably that looks good there, I'm going to just select all of it and use my Shape Builder tool. Shape Builder, right, and I'm going to get rid of all of that and that. Okay, which leaves me with just the tongue and the curve that I want. And because I aligned it, if I take this now and stick it onto here, I should be able to align this. Oops, did I pick everything up there? What happened there? Oh, I, uh, I don't know what that piece is. I think when I made so long, I don't know what that piece was. What's going on here? I'm gonna actually delete that. I don't need that. And I'm actually gonna double click this and just bring this down a little bit. Like that. Okay, notice I'm in the edit. Okay, let me undo that. Okay, I was here. Delete this thing. I was here and I kind of noticed I don't like that. So if I try to move this, because I grouped it, I can't move it, right? I could, there's two ways to do it. I could use the direct select tool, okay? And then I can move it using that. Or I can double click this thing. And now I'm in the edit mode. I can actually pick this up and drag it down just a little bit until I'm happy with the positioning. Back out to the main artboard. Okay, i drag this over here. And I'm just gonna place this right there. Looks good. Okay, all right. And there's our Kermit. Oh, double click something. All right, I'm going to drag all of this guy over here. Get rid of that. All right, and the last thing I need to do, Kermit's got this collar. Um, okay, so we're going to create a little collar here. We haven't learned this yet, okay, but we're going to learn very quickly how to use the pen tool. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, where is it? Here. Okay, the pen tool basically creates anchor points, and it'll try and close whatever shape you're working on by closing the first point with the, the last one you clicked. You want to always close every shape. So you'll notice that the first point that I, it's trying to go to is this one right here. I want to click on that to finish my shape. And now when I hit V, okay, and I go to move it. If I go to my outlines, command Y, you can see that's a closed shape. If I didn't do that, okay, I'm going to delete that. Okay, if I did the same thing and went like this, okay, and then I just finished and hit escape on my keyboard, okay, when I go to hit command Y, you see that's not a closed shape. Now it doesn't look like it's going to be a problem now, but it will be a problem later if I go and try and go and work with this shape in any other shapes, okay? So get in the habit of always closing your shapes. If you forget, if you've got that like this, you can always just hit the pen tool and just click on the two points and it'll close it for you and that's now a closed shape, okay? All right, what I was going to do, the, the reason I brought that up is because we're going to use the pen tool just to do this. We're going to click and just create this sort of color that Kermit has, okay, and it's just a kind of a bunch of points. That looks a bit more like a goatee. I'm going to hit I, I on my keyboard for eyedropper tool, pick up that green, okay, I'm going to change it to a little bit darker, double click this, bring that down to about there, and then I'm going to set it to the back, arrange, send to back, and there's our Kermit. Okay, once you're done, you're going to save it, file, save, okay, and you're going to save that in your um, name folder. You're also going to go file, export, you're going to export as, you're going to save a PNG, and you're also going to do a command Y outlines, where you go and do a command shift R to take a screenshot of your outlines to include on your blog post. All right, that's the tutorial. I hope it made sense. If there was anything that was confusing, go back and re-watch that uh, that one section um, and practice with this Bezier tool okay take the, the sort of the pen tool okay um, learning to use the pen tool and learning to use the anchor point tool and those control those Beziers takes a bit of work but definitely a very powerful tool okay good luck